Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I've had my Rockler router table for quite a while now and I really, really like it. It's got a great top, it's got an excellent lift, good fence, good dust collection, sturdy frame, even lockable casters so that it's solid when you need it to be. The only complaint I have is that there's no storage. There's all this wasted space and I need to find something to do with it. So for quite a while now, I've wanted to build a cabinet to go inside it but I've been really indecisive about what that needs to be. I've got all these bits and all these feather boards and just all the router related paraphernalia that goes with the router table stored in a completely different cabinet in drawers, hard to access. It's not the way it should be. So I need to get all that stuff built into here. Rather than reinventing the wheel, Rockler actually has a set of plans for a cabinet that goes right into this thing. Now there's a lot of stuff I really like and there's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna change for my personal preferences. So let's see if I can follow instructions and build a variation of this cabinet. Well, real quick, I wanted to point out that I used my brain incorrectly and this one is in the wrong place. Um, just a mistake on my part moving the fence to the wrong position. I thought I measured it. I didn't account for measuring on this side rather than this side. Not a big deal. I will fix this later. It would make me take the blade out and swap stuff and get all disorganized in order to fix it now. It's not hurting anything until I assemble it, so I'll fix it later. Right here is where I start to deviate from the Rockler plans. Their plan calls for open shelving on both sides of the cabinet. Well, I only want one on the right side and I want it covered by a door to try to keep dust out. So I used pocket hole joinery to make a simple face frame. If you look close, you'll notice I put edge banding around the inside before I put it together. I did this with as many parts as I could to help hide the plywood edges in this build. I marked and trimmed off the top corners so the frame would fit around the bolts that hold the metal legs together. I didn't quite get it all on the first try, so I hacked up a little bit more, but this ugliness is all hidden by the legs. I used a self-centering drill bit to drill pilot holes through the existing holes in the legs, then secured the frame with some short screws. I slid the shelving unit in place to make sure everything fit, and it looks like Rockler's plans were right on the money. On the opposite side, I opted to go for just a solid panel instead of another set of bit storage shelves. This was partly because I just don't have that many router bits, but the main reason was I wanted enough space in the bottom drawer to store my fixed and plunge base routers. I wanted this panel to be flush with the inside of the legs rather than the outside. So after marking where the legs overlap the panel, I used some CA glue to attach spacers to the front of the panel, then added screws through the back. 
I made this piece out of scraps so I could work out the concept, but later you'll notice I swapped it out for a panel made out of the same 3 quarter inch oak plywood as the rest of the cabinetry. Moving on to the main drawer, I had to account for the extra width I added, then I just followed Rockler's plans and put this component together. The carcass is very straightforward, just a couple of dados, then some glue and brad nails to hold it all together. I knew that my back piece had perfectly square corners, so I used that as a reference to pull the side square when I nailed it in place. For the drawer itself, the plans used a simple joinery method that is very strong and seems to force the parts to be square. However, this frontsy backsy inside outside series of cuts was almost too much for my simple brain, and I spent an embarrassingly long time trying to convince myself I could handle it. I do like this drawer design, but I wouldn't use it for just a single drawer again. There's just too much setup, but I would definitely use it if I had to make a whole bunch of drawers at once. Installing slides on a single drawer like this is easy. I used spacers to position the body component, then with the drawer body in place and spaced up from the bottom, I just added screws as I pulled the drawer out. I put the whole works into the router table to test the fit, and it was tight, but it went right in. On the left side of the dust box, there was just enough room to add another small drawer. I measured up from the main drawer box to make sure I cleared the suction control vent, then took all the parts back out of the frame to make it easier to work on. I mounted both slides to the left side panel. This way I didn't have to drill into the metal dust box, but it also meant I didn't lose a half inch of drawer width from having a slide on both sides. For this drawer, I skipped the cool joinery and just went with butt joints. Then, with the parts back inside the frame, I set the drawer on a spacer, then attached the slides. These slides, by the way, are way overkill for this tiny drawer. They are rated for 100 pounds, and you couldn't make the drawer weigh 100 pounds even if you poured lead into it. So why not just use one slide? Because there's enough slop in a single slide that the drawer leans over and looks ugly. By using the second slide, it securely holds the drawer upright. At this point, if you're smart, you would just use some plywood to make a door in the drawer faces, then move on with your life. But I like to abuse myself and use shop furniture as practice for more skilled woodworking, so I decided to mill up some walnut and make nice drawer fronts and my first raised panel door. The drawer fronts were easy. Just cut to size, then add a nice edge treatment. The raised panel door, on the other hand, meant cutting rails and styles, then profiling their edges, then gluing up a center panel, cutting it to size, then adding the full raised panel profile to it. Those are lots of steps, but at least they aren't too hard to do. The measuring, math, and the setup are the hard parts. It's beyond the scope of this project to include a detailed raised panel door tutorial, but I'm curious, is that something you'd like me to put together? Leave me a comment if you want a follow-up video dedicated specifically to the process of making a raised panel door like this one. With the door completed, I used a jig to drill recesses, then attached soft close hinges. Then I positioned the door in the face frame and secured it by running screws into pre-drilled holes. To mount the big drawer face, I spaced it up from the bottom slightly, then clamped it to the box. Then, I ran screws through the holes that I drilled out for a handle. This temporarily secures the face to the drawer, so I can open it up and add screws from the inside. Next, I can remove the screws and install the handle. For the little drawer, I needed to make sure the face was close to the frame without running into it, so I installed that with the drawer in place by using CA glue and accelerator to position the face, then once again adding screws from the inside. At this point, all the fitting and figuring is finally finished, so it's time to throw some finish on these fine fellas. Holy smokes, there's a lot of alliteration in this project. After all the finish was thoroughly dry, I reinstalled all the hardware and added some inserts to the bit storage shelves. Now you could just drill the holes to precisely fit your router bits, but these little fellas have a shoulder inside them that means they can hold half inch or quarter inch shanks, so you can rearrange all you want and not have to redrill holes. Not to mention, they look pretty cool. I installed all the components back into the frame and screwed them together to keep things from sliding around. The little drawer looks kinda ugly from the back, so I made a small piece to cover it up. This was a little tricky to install, because it had to go on after the panel was in place, but the dust box was in the way to get a straight line of sight to the pocket hole screws. So with the board clamped in place to free up my hands, I blindly felt around with a series of wobbly bits until I managed to drive in the screws. Then I screwed on a second piece to hide the corner. I flipped the internals of the on-off switch around so the cables are now coming out the top, then sent them back over the top of the bit storage. Sometimes it's just nice to have another flat work surface, and that means the fence needs a place to hide. I made two quick brackets and bolted them to the back, so when I want to stash the fence, it hides just out of the way. 
There's even enough room back here that I can leave this fence storage tray attached. The little drawer in the front is a perfect size to hold the tools I used most often, and I made a small divider to keep my insert rings organized. On the bare side of the cabinet, I mounted a chute to catch the dust that launches off the side when routing dados. Then, I added a miter slot and a section of T-Track to hold my feather boards out of the way and keep clutter out of my big drawer. I also used some of the empty space on the back to mount my dado indexing jig. And in the big bottom drawer, I was able to fit two full-sized hand routers as well as all the other miscellaneous clutter that still needs to be here. And there we have it. All of my router-related tools are now housed in this one rolling location. I'm beyond tickled with how this thing turned out. Rockler's plans were a great place to start, and I'm happy with the changes I made to the design for my personal needs, not to mention the unnecessary walnut accents. The biggest of thank yous goes to Rockler for sponsoring this video. And because this is based on their plans, I'm not offering any plans of my own, but there is a link in the description so you can download their plan for free. There are also links to all the Rockler products I used in this video, as well as any other relevant information. So scroll down, check them out, and that's all I've got for you. Please let me know what you think in the comments section, and make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more projects like this one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.